everybody. Another Solomon's Tales Hat Yai Special. And I'm sat in my cold conservatory in the UK. It's winter. I will not miss this. And all these jumpers, they'll go to the charity shop when I move to Thailand. Oh. So, Ning, pop round. <laughs> the knock on the door, she's come in, she's feeling guilty. She did have a bag with her as well. It's dropped on the floor. She's going to stay in that room for the next few weeks that Solomon's paid for. And the bike. Hmm. Um, after a, a night of Ning um, feeling guilty, <laughs> I say it was a passionate night. Morning comes, and Solomon's right, that's it. I'm heading off, leaving Thailand, off to Malaysia. And uh, says to Ning, that's it, I'm putting my stuff in the bag and I'm off, I will see you whenever. I don't know if I'm going traveling around Malaysia or I'm just gonna do a quick visa run. We'll see, I might be back in a week. And Ning's, okay, cool. She just doesn't care. She's happy. Free room, free bike. I can imagine he'll come if he comes back within those next two weeks, there'll be four girls in that room for sure. Absolutely guarantee it. So Solom throws his few belongings in his rucksack, grabs his passport, empties the safe, gives Ning the key. He's got a bit of uh, Thai Bart. And he's like, right, Bangkok, airport. And at the time, 15 years ago, it was uh, Don Wang airport he was heading to. So, it doesn't like buses, Solomon. Nah, taxi. And back then it was uh, about 700 baht for, so it, it was, um, was pennies 700 baht for a taxi meter up to the airport now a lot of the taxis come down from the airport with new foreigners coming into Patea and quite often they'll sit around second road I won't miss that either airplanes quite often <laughs> really noisy one quite often the taxis they'll come down with foreigners from Bangkok from the airport who get off the plane and straight to Patea. So they sit around in Second Road and there's a couple of little taxi kiosks around. Um, at the time there was one in Soy 7 and uh, Solomon would just either go there or just go up to Second Road. Um, and usually they're around. On this occasion he walked out of the uh, room next to Beach Road, jumped in a song cell along and walked up Soy 7. Up to the little taxi kiosk and said hi uh, any taxis around that go in can go back to Bangkok yep there's two at the top of the road now hang on ring a guy it's a quick phone call <laughs> it's, it's only 100 meters away and no nope, guys coming down literally two minutes taxis there <laughs> uh, great so Solomon says to the driver Don Juan 700 baht yep yeah, yeah. He'd have had to go back empty if he didn't hang around and get a fare back. So uh, it's good money for him. And the exchange rate back then was about 75 baht to the pound as well. You know, so it's pennies. Jumps in the taxi, a couple of hours, he's up at Don Juan. He hasn't booked a flight or nothing. <laughs> Gets up to Don Juan, in he goes. And there's quite a few choice of planes, but Air Asia's the one that at that time was going to Hat Yai regular. Um, and he's up there at about, uh, he's early, he's up there at about half ten. Luckily, midday there's a flight to Hat Yai. <laughs> uh, single one way ticket was 800 baht. Again, which is pennies, it's you know, it's like 15 bucks. So, <sighs> in he goes, checks in, he's only got hand luggage passport off through the airport usual stuff at the airport grabs a bit of food air asia plane 
straight down to Hat Yai, it's an hour, if that, 45 minutes, hour, landed. Now, Solomon's never been here before. The southern part of Thailand um, is quite a mix with um, religions as well as um, being on the border. And as you come out of Hat Yai Airport, Solomon immediately noticed as, um, for instance, as the, uh, from the Muslim religion, from Sikh religion, which you haven't seen in Patea so much, um, with the, the Sikh turbans on and things. Thai is Malaysian people. It, it, it is a mix. He immediately noticed this just at the airport uh, and thought, this looks different. Now, big map outside the airport. He hadn't done any research. Looks at the map. Hat Yai. Is it a city? It's a big town, if it's not a city. Uh, right in the centre seems to be shopping centres and bits and pieces on the map. And you can see there's hotels marked dots all round and things. I'll just go straight to the centre. I'm going to get a hotel. I'm not even going to try the border today. Again, taxi queues there. Goes up to the taxi driver. How much? He's speaking in English. How much? Centre of Hat Yai. Uh, and the man said... Uh, Shopping centre, he's like, yeah, yeah, 300 baht, right, Solomon, no, he's no idea how far it is, but it's about 20 minutes, jumps in the cab, into the centre, complete different scenery around Hat Yai, um, and he gets down to the centre, pays the guy, out he gets, and right in front of him is a glass shopping centre with a McDonald's, right next door is a hotel. Next to that is a door, nightclub. There's a sign, a little entrance for cars, for a car park, but there's a sign there saying soapy massage in the car park. There's another uh, hotel and shops there. And it's just shops all around him. It's like quite busy. Really, you know, really nice feeling. And he just thinks, wow, this looks great. So he thought, I'll just check the prices of this hotel next to McDonald's. He walks in the door up a couple of steps. It's only a sort of narrow entrance. Um, so there's like shops that other side. So he goes in, the desk along the left, system high. How much for a room for a, one or two nights? 700 baht. He's like, oh, have a uh, shower, bath, aircon? Yeah. Breakfast? No. Okay. 700 baht. Have breakfast? You know, not have restaurant, just rooms. Okay. He said, give me a room, 700 baht, I'll have one night for now. Guy's passport. So he says, I'll keep passport one night, give you back tomorrow. Okay, that's the usual. And uh, the man said, safe in the room. Okay. He said, pay you now? He said, no. Check out, pay. Okay, his keys. Literally just stepped out of the taxi, 10 metres hotel. He sorted. Oh. Okay, I'll dump my bag in the room and let's go and explore. So up in a lift, whatever floor it was. Room's about, it's not bad size actually, it's about 40 square metre room. <sighs> Noisy old planes. Um, yeah, it's about 40 square metre room. There's a bath and a shower in the bathroom. Not always uh, the case, sometimes just shower. Wardrobe as usual, big, big double bed. Uh, windows, opens the windows, and it's a view of a side of another building. <laughs> no view at all, just a wall. <laughs> no balcony, nothing. Um, yeah, plain room. Dark wood sort of furniture, sort of oldie. Could do with a bit of an update, but looks fine. So, finds the safe, digs out his pocket. He's got about 30,000 baht. Um, so he throws about 20,000 baht in the safe, locks it, one of those number jobs, and uh, quick shower. Change, put some shorts on and a reasonable tailored shirt and sort of deck shoes and things. Right. Haven't had a McDonald's for yonks, not mad on them, but I'll go and grab a McDonald's for now, get me some food inside me. It's after lunch, it's about one o'clock, two o'clock. Off he goes down, drops the keys at the desk. Next door, McDonald's, and it's quite a good shopping centre, it looks nice. 
goes in and grabs some McDonald's food, sat there in the window, mooching around, you know, looking at, watching the people go by. Um, and as I said, mixed religion, mixed people. A lot of different looking clothes and, which is fine. <laughs> you know, it's just interesting. Um, has lunch, I think it's right. And I have a look around the shopping centre and have a walk round. And he does, for the next couple of hours he goes around, he finds a market which is selling all the Thai food. And there's quite a variation of food here. There's more things for sale that it, different fish and different meats and things that he hadn't seen in the rest of Thailand. So that's, uh, that's good. And he, he works it out, it doesn't take long because it's not big in the centre. But opposite ho his hotel is a big square of buildings and one there's another shopping centre quite big the biggest one in the centre probably a um, bit older style but it's a big square and then around the square is hotels and shops and things and bars a couple of hours walking around it gets round to the one side of this big square underneath the big shopping centre there's some stairs going down it's a bar right and you can hear TVs and music down he goes in and it's quite a big bar. In fact, it's a very big bar. Sports TV's going on, there's music on. Not that many people in there. And he perches up at the bar, gets a beer. There's no real girls in there or anything, and he's like, I haven't noticed any beer bars. Nothing. Not noticed one. Hello, barman, get some beer. Barman speaks good English and starts chatting to him. And he realises that Solomon's never been to Hat Yai before and sort of says um, first time and all that. Solomon's like, yeah, it's totally different here from Patea. And the barman's all, yeah, yeah, we have live band here tonight, he said, and have many bars here in this area of live bands. He said, you want, <laughs> he just come straight out with it, you know, Solomon's there, single guy, a traveller. He said, you want girl? And Solomon's like, no, 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 talk me you want. Just talk to me. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, so, here's a beer. Chills. And he thinks, well, I'll, uh, I'll go and crash for a bit. Come out, get some food somewhere. And then have a look at these, uh, these bands tonight. Forget the border. Not interested, no rush. So he, goes, he does it. Back to the hotel. Crashes, later on, shower. Chucks a pair of jeans on, nice shirt. Thinks, yeah, I'll dress up. He's only got one pair of jeans. <laughs> and uh, out he goes. And on that walk earlier, he spotted a couple of cafe sort of restaurants. And he headed back up near the food market and found what is a Thai, local Thai cafe restaurant. Dives in there, gets some usual Thai food, some sort of meat and rice and stuff. Nice meal, very cheap. It's only about 80 bars. The prices down in Hat Yai are much cheaper. The beer in the bar earlier was only 60 bars for a bottle of beer. So that's good, that's good. Much cheaper. Anyway, finishes his meal. It must be getting on for about eight o'clock. I'll go back to that bar. And he comes around the corner but as before he goes down the steps into that bar, he looks on the other side of the road, and there's another rock bar um, signed up. Looks really good. And this bar's sort of a jazz bar. So great music bars there, great music bars. And he thinks, well, maybe I'll go and try the, the rock bar um, first, and then I'll come across the jazz bar later. So it crosses the road, uh, quite a bit of traffic, even at that time of night. And it crosses the road, which is about three lanes, dodges the traffic, goes in, rock bar, 80 bar to drink. And that's paying for the band as well. Not as big bar, tables are all quite close together. Few people in there, and it goes in, has a drink, music, the band's on, brilliant music, absolutely brilliant. Um, really enjoying himself and some other people are chatting and he's chatting some people on tables next to him and things and chat away no girls no single girls walking around 
not, he's not there on the head in this Nick Holiday Iron, I know. But he's in a new town, a new part of Thailand he's never been to before. If he could find some sort of girlfriend for 24 hours, she could show him around Hat Yai. That's his thought. Just wants a, maybe a translator and a tour guide. Hmm. Anyway, he spends a couple of hours, time flies by, must be 10 o'clock-ish, and uh, all good. And normally I'd leave it here, but a couple of you have asked, as we're only doing the Solomons once a week, make them a bit longer. So just for you guys, I do listen. Let's continue. A couple of hours in the rock bar, comes out, right, he's only had a few beers, going across the road, down the steps into the jazz bar. Traffic's quietened down. Down he goes, again, well, maybe it's a big, big bar. Maybe there's about 30 people in there. Not any girls, again. And he goes down, and the barman, same barman, hi, and he remembers, hello, uh, Sa Solomon. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Beer? So, yeah, yeah, give, us a, uh, give me a Chang. I'm trying some Chang beer tonight. It's a bit different. He's, and the guy's like, uh, how long are you staying? And he says, I don't know. He said, I'm doing a visa run. I'm going to go to Malaysia. Um, maybe tomorrow. don't know if I'm going to go into Malaysia and stay or come back here. But I like the bars and stuff here. And, and Solomon says to him, why is there no girl bars? There's no... And the guy then explains... And if you look at my older videos, there's one there about KKK bars. So there are bars outside of town with girls where a lonely traveller can get a tuk-tuk to a bar, enter, find a tour guide, but would pay the bar the whole amount of money for the tour guides. It's unbelievable today. A lot of these old biplanes it's cloudy and miserable. Why are they up there? It's freezing cold up there. So these bars, you you would pay for the the tour guide for whether it's a short period of time or a 24-hour period of time. Be a fixed price, everything to the bar. And back in those days, that would be about 1,500 bar for everything. Um, so the, the guy said these are outside of town, they're all over the place. And so I'm like, ah, right, okay. Now I understand. And he said, ah, never mind. He has a drink. He goes and grabs a table. Doesn't want to sit there talking to the barman all night. And his table, and there's some other people around again. He's chatting a little bit. There's a band on and they're playing jazz music. Really good, really good. Now, if by magic, if by magic, two girls come into the bar Solomon clocks them coming down the stairs there's a tall girl um, not not tall tall but a tallish maybe five foot six a lot of Thai girls are five foot four so the one girl slightly taller uh, very slim long black hair the other girl much shorter about five foot four not quite as thin um, and clocks on coming in and they go over to the bar straight to that barman what's going on they're chatting to him and he's, they're behind him and you can see in one of the mirrors there's a mirrors on the wall in these bars and you can see in the mirror they're there they're not ordering drinks it's just like Solomon's already like what's going on there's the radars going something's happening you know the two girls come over from behind Solomon one each side say hi can we join you then immediately alarm bells are going here's a setup coming here what's going on and he's like Ugh. why <laughs> oh, our friend whatever his name is um, says you're on your own and he feels sorry for you and Solomon's like mm, two girls this is like a pack of wolves and he's like what you got to lose a couple of drinks okay girls sit down 
Get a drink. I'll buy you a drink. Tell me about Hat Yai and you and life in the southern part of Thailand. Now, um, names, no idea. Going to be calling one subject A and one subject B. <laughs> <coughs> subject A is the smaller one. Subject B, the larger, taller, thinner one. Anyway, they get chatting, the music's playing, Solomon's had a few beers now, you know. And they're, they've ordered these sprites. It's like this wine, fizzy wine stuff. A lot of you know what I'm on about. Spy or whatever it's called. They've had those, they've ordered those. Obviously, it's not lady drink prices because it's not a girl bar sort of thing. So, normal price, probably about 70, 80 baht each. That's fine. Uh, so we're getting on what 10 11 at night and the two girls chatting away in there one's from one of the uh, subject a actually comes from Chiang Mai subject B comes from uh, right on the border but on the Thai side at some village name but he's Thai so they're both Thai right. subject a very chatty very very chatty hmm too chatty very bubbly you know if they are girlfriend girlfriend you can see she was subject A is the dominant one subject B is quieter they're calling them subjects that doesn't sound good should I just call them A and B sounds really bad <laughs> but they are a bit of a subject these two <laughs> anyway they drink for about an hour and then A says to Solomon Solomon's, well actually Solomon says that I'm getting a bit tired, I'm going to call it a night, girls. And A turns around to him and says, uh, Would you like some company? Would you like some extra special Zumba classes, aerobics classes? Um this evening and Solomon's like nah, no two girls complete strangers so freelancer alarm bells ringing he's like nah, not really not really and then A turns around to him and says but we can help you get to the border tomorrow to do your you know he's mentioned he's going to the border we can help you get there or show you how to get there and all this and it saves us going home so you know if you were to give us 500 baht each, 500 baht each, um, for our knowledge, our instruction, we would be very happy. Um, you'd be helping us. All the, you know, all the, this, this A is a saleswoman. She's brilliant. Solomon, a few beers, you know, the beer goggles are starting to come out. They're good looking girls. Don't get me wrong, they're good looking girls, but he's, Oh, what's the worst that can happen? Oh dear. What's he say? Hmm. And I am going to leave it there. You've now got 23 minutes, an extra 8 minutes. I will catch you on the next one. Subject A, subject B. Do they have... The battery went again. That's a new recharge battery. Stupid thing. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. Be good.